We define child protection and humanitarian action as prevention and response to abuse, exploitation, neglect, and violence against children. Um, the terms that are in, in, in our definition that are very important are prevention and response, which suggests that we want to do both preventative work and response to immediate needs, uh, but also the, the, the terms of neglect, abuse, exploitation, and violence, which each have a specific definition to themselves that suggests all the different vulnerabilities that a child can, can have that can lead to harm to that child, particularly in, in a humanitarian context. We define prevention on, on two levels. Um, at one level is the primary prevention, which is when you address the root causes of harm to a child. So you identify why children are being separated from their, their caregivers. Uh, you identify why children are being recruited into armed forces and groups and try to address those root causes to, to lower and minimize the chance that that child get to the point where he or she is forced or decides to go a, a direction that might lead to adversity. Um, this, the, the other type of prevention that we talk about is secondary prevention, um, which links to normally our response. So if a child is already harmed, for example, a child is in child labor, and we ad identify that child, we try to help that child come out of child labor, uh, get reintegrated into, into the ed education system, system. But at the same time, we want to work with that child and the family and the community to make sure that the child doesn't fall back into the same situation. Response efforts are really the, the more sh short term, immediate, addressing immediate needs of a child who, who has gone through adversity and has been harmed. For example, um, a child who has been separated from their caregivers, um, you would want to make sure that you address the immediate needs of that child so that the child is safe if a child is sleeping on the street, you want to make sure that there is an environment that is safe for that child. Then you want to make sure that you start the efforts to bring that child back to the family environment, ideally the original family of the child, if the, fa if the environment is safe for the child, um, and reunify the child with, with the caregivers. And that's how we define response. Humanitarian action, we used to call it emergencies, child protection in emergencies. Um, the reason we, we came to change that um, title is because we identified that there's, there's a lot of situations where this, the context itself is not considered an emergency, but the child or the family that has been displaced or, or forced to, to leave for, for whatever reason has ended up in that context, which by definition is not an emergency context, but this, the conditions of that family or child still requires humanitarian response. So it's, it's a situation where um, basically risks are heightened, vulnerabilities are heightened, therefore the chance of, the chance of harm is, is much higher than a, than a normal, normal context. The children's well-being is, a, is, a, is an umbrella, an overarching um, vision and goal that, that we have and we consider child protection as one of the sectors, as one of the humanitarian sectors that tries to contribute to that broader objective of child well-being um, and healthy development of, of, of children. Um, it, it encompasses many different aspects of a child's life, it, dignity, um, participation in, in decision making for, for themselves, education, health, nutrition, all of those together will, will form a, a, a child that develops in a healthy way, both physically, um, but also so emotionally and, and from psychosocial perspective, um, and can become a member of the, the society that can make decisions for, for themselves and participate meaningfully in, in, in the society and the community.